Hi, we're Jack and Chanel. We've been married for eight years and we have two beautiful little kids, uh, Jacob and Jessica. Jacob is two tomorrow and Jessica will be three soon. Adoption is something that I've had on my heart forever, like since I was a kid. I've always wanted to adopt and I think um, being a child who grew up in a not safe environment, I was aware really early of how important that was to be a kid who grows up somewhere where there's love and safety and I think that God used that actually to like give my life a foundation on this love for people who were in need or were in hidden spaces or um, who needed people advocating for them and that kind of thing and that's like the trajectory of my work. I work with vulnerable people but it grew in me this love for children um, to provide them a place of safety and of love and um, so adoption was always the dream for me. I always imagined it would be international adoption but um, then when I met Jack and when we were teenagers and we were talking and dreaming about family, it turned out that that had always been on his heart as well. I think as we came to faith when we were like 17-ish, around the same time, and started to learn about God and the Father heart of God and his adoptive heart for us, um, what we realised when we started dreaming about family is that his heart, the way that he has brought us into his family and we were once not his, um, once didn't have an identity and now we do and called a part of his family that meant so much to me as like God had done so much healing in in my life and how I see him as father and for Jack his dad died when he was one and so he didn't really have a father figure and so this idea of God loving us enough to um, take us out of orphanhood and, and call us um, citizens and, and children and sons and daughters after being strangers to him um, meant so much to us and we always wanted to be able to say to our kids, you know, once we didn't belong to God, once we were far away from him and he brought us into his family and gave us a name and called us his chosen, loved, whole, free. And once you weren't a part of our family and now you are and you are given the same names and we want to love you as he loves us. Formal adoption was our first goal, I think, but in the process of going through the application for that, we realised that we actually weren't eligible because Jack was a Kiwi and he's not an Australian citizen. And so we just got stuck there. So fostering seemed to be the next, the next best option. As we went through the fostering process, we realised that what we wanted was a child as young as possible who could come to us and be part of our family forever. But we also were told at that time that that's actually really unlikely and that kids usually don't come into care that young who are also then able to stay with foster families forever. Yeah. Um, and so we, we lay that before God and we surrendered it to him and we felt, like, God, if you've put this dream on our hearts, then there's a way and you defy <laughs> what statistics say and what odds say and we know that you could do this if this is the dream that you've given us for family. And so we prayed and we waited and we went through the assessment and interview process and four months after we were approved, we came across this little girl um, whose name started with J. And we were told about her and we were asked whether or not we'd be interested in fostering her. And then there was a spanner in the works because we were told that her legal processes were gonna be delayed like significantly, like months or years. We explored other options and they didn't work and we waited a few more months and, um, and then we got a call one day that this little baby Jay, um, miraculously her court orders had gone through so much quicker than what they were expecting and were we still interested. And so in a whirlwind of a three week transition, we had a tiny little girl in our home and her name was Jessica and she was our daughter. We had had Jessica just wrapping our heads around the whirlwind of parenthood and we got a courtesy call from the department and they said, hey, just giving you a heads up, Jessica has a baby brother 
our 11 month old mm. has a younger sibling. Um, her birth parents have had another baby who can't, who can't stay with them. Um, he's quite sick though, he's been born with heart disease and mm. he's gone to Melbourne for heart surgery and we're not really sure if he's going to make it. Um, so just letting you know and we came off that call um, knowing his name and knowing that this little boy Jacob needed our prayers mm. and that was, that was all we heard of it. And a couple of months later we had another call um, and they said to us, Jacob's come back to Adelaide, he's home now, he's recovering, would you consider taking on Jacob too? And we just thought, what, what a ridiculous <laughs> question <laughs> for us who are just wrapping our heads around being a mum and dad. Mm. We've barely had Jessica for three months. It still felt so new to even take care of one kid that we were like, are we, are we, are we actually able to do one? Like, let alone two, like we haven't even, don't, we not confidently say at that point yet that we could take care of one child. And so the idea of skipping straight to two was, seemed crazy. I think I said to them, I don't know how you can ask us that, but, but it's not a no, like, like everything we do, we'll take it away and we'll pray about it and we'll consider it and give us some time, we'll, we'll get back to you. I felt a no in my heart because I was completely overwhelmed by the possibility of, of that. Um, and Jack being the eternal optimist that he is, was like, no, let's just, let's just put it before God and we, we'll pray. As we discerned together um, what it would cost of our lives, whether or not we could do that, if like there were more sacrifices that needed to be made, we really felt God change our hearts and um, make room for Jacob in our hearts and, and he gave us a yes over Jacob's life and we, we thought whatever it would cost us to um, steward his life and for our kids to know each other, which just never happens um, in foster care, his life is worth that and um, we really received God's confirmation on that and so <laughs> four months after saying yes to Jessica, we said yes to Jacob and he was in our house. Um, yeah, at that time we were told he was well enough to come to us to have a normal kind of family <laughs> life and we worked out fairly soon after he came to us that that just wasn't the case and he was still really sick, um, was having a lot of issues with his health and his heart and his feeding and um, we were just thrown in the deep end and so we spent the first, oh, what, 14 months of his life in and out of hospital. But I think what we always took comfort in was that although we had felt maybe we had said a bit of an ignorant, unknowing yes to him and his life, God's yes was over this and, and he knew and he had chosen Jacob for us and that was so much comfort to us because we knew that what we didn't know he knew and he holds his life. And I think that was super significant to us. One of the things that God has taught me and taught us more and more from having Jacob and Jessica um, has been just how much of a blessing children are. Um, and we were reading, uh, reading throughout the Psalms and came, and came through to Psalm 127. What that Psalm talks about isn't just biological children, but it's the idea of raising up children, of investing in other people, um, which is precisely what we see happen by Jesus and the way that he invests and raises up uh, the people around him. Um, it's the way that Paul goes about his ministry, raising up people like Timothy and others as well, two of the most prominent figures of our entire Bible, and yet both of them incredibly blessed, incredibly uh, able to be able to experience the blessing of raising up and having people um, below them that they have invested in and given time and attention and sacrificed for. It is a gift to you as much as it is um, a gift to children to be raised in, in the house of the Lord and, and by Christian parents, um, that it is a gift to, to us to have that privilege and that opportunity to raise children as well. There's just so much to becoming a parent that you can't imagine 
or prepare for beforehand. Um, and we definitely had that experience going into it. I think there was aspects to it where it reminded me of different sins that I thought I had a handle on, um, that all of a sudden were coming out in this new life circumstance. Um, things like anger and frustration for me in particular, as I was getting up to a crying baby that didn't appear to have a reason to be so, but it was 3 a.m. and I'd rather be sleeping. Um, and all of a sudden there was these reminders of God saying, uh, look at all the spaces I'm still working on you. Look at all the spaces that you still have room to grow and to become more like Christ. Uh, look at all these spaces where you still have an opportunity to lead your family and to lead your children into what wholehearted Christ following looks like. Uh, because we recognize that while we are still in this, on this earth, uh, that Christ will not be done with us until we are home with him mm -hmm. um, in whatever capacity that may be. And so, yeah, seeing that perpetual work of the Holy Spirit in us to be growing and shaping us and using all of life circumstances uh, to do that was a continual revelation um, in a brand new way of having Jacob and Jessica along. Mm -hmm. For anybody, there's so many ways in life that you try and measure your worth and your identity and your importance in um, like how you can show up for people and how much influence you have and work and friendships and motherhood, parenthood, I think strips a lot of that away. And what I've noticed God does in motherhood is he kind of hides you in this obscurity where you actually don't have a lot to measure and a lot to show um, and not a lot left to offer people anymore. And that's a really vulnerable place. And yet what God does in that hiddenness and as he sets boundaries and limitations on our time and our capacity is um, he's taught me so much about how much his presence is worth. And I think as a mum, there are a thousand different decisions and, and choices and circumstances every single day where you have to lay down your own preferences and your own time and your sleep and your mm -hmm. needs and your preferences for someone else and continually pour out this love um, when you feel like you don't have anything left. And it's showed me how true it is that he is always with me and that his grace is sufficient and his power is made perfect in weakness and that he is everything that we need because motherhood yeah, reminds you so desperately of your own need. And that's a really good thing, but it's a really hard thing to, to have to experience and to know. Um, but yeah, I think it's taught me how to turn my need to be aware of my need and then turn my need into prayer and offer that to him and surrender my life and control and the lives of these little people who we actually, we get to steward, but we don't have as much say as we'd like in how their lives go because they're their own little people. So, but I think that's a gift because it helps us see God as the one who actually has ultimate control and power and, and who loves and cares for them much deeper than we ever could. Our hope for and prayer for Jacob and Jessica, uh, I think for me, most easily comes through in what's ended up being a repetitive prayer that I'll pray over them every time I put them to bed. Lord, most of all, and if nothing else, make them yours, that they would know you and follow you all the days of their lives from as young an age as possible and forevermore their names written in your Lamb's Book of Life. We do want to see them um, to, to grow strong and healthy um, and experience some of the, the blessings that this world has to offer. Uh, but ultimately, it's, we recognize that the greatest thing and the greatest blessing that anyone can ever experience is to, to know and follow Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Another hope would be that as they get older and as they learn their own story and they learn about their first family and their second family, that they would know that their lives didn't begin with brokenness and loss, although that is a part of it, but they would know 
that their story actually tells the greater story of God's love and his redemption and that they would see their lives as um, part of God bringing all things and all people to himself mm. and that it would be a, a story of hope and of joy and of love um, and that they would be proud of that. Jesus was adopted. Like his, his lineage from King David was Joseph and Joseph adopted Jesus. And this is all over the gospel and it's all over family. And we just love being able to express the gospel to the world in this way that doesn't make sense. And I, there's nothing special about us um, except that we see the way Jesus has loved us and, um, and want to love our kids that way. And I think that you can do that too.